Well, here we are. It's Friday, uh, August 5th, 2022, and this is our weekly video. A look back at last week's uh, uh, auctions on, uh, on the global member pages and what the results were over there. There's some interesting sales. One is just finishing up today. That's the Eldred sale down on Cape Cod. Uh, there's some nice China trade paintings. We'll get into some of the prices they brought, talk about them a little bit. And the uh, eBay auctions, as always, a few things that are coming up and, and some changes here on the site. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was uh, there haven't been a lot of auctions, so we haven't published a lot of auction catalogs on here lately. But if you go over to the catalog section in here under the little red box, as we all, a lot of you use it, uh, know about this page on the upper left you're going to find a, a book that we added this week it's a paper a book i don't know uh, wh where it was published exactly but uh it's a very good uh, uh about 50 pages heavily illustrated on uh yon dynasty ceramics uh and I, apparently this went into a book of some kind i think because it's, it's it starts as chapter seven and um it was written by laurie bonds barnes and uh, a very knowledgeable person on uh, on the on the Yuan Dynasty, the end of the Song, um, the integrations of the uh, porcelain markets, how they made porcelain, where they made them. There's a significant section in here on um, on uh, Celadons. They talk. She talks a lot about the uh, different kiln sites and uh, the kinds of things they produced for export, the kind of things they made domestically, and, and that sort of thing. And there's some great examples in here. And it's interesting, a lot of the pieces that they, they, they talk about are in the Detroit Institute of Art, which if you've never looked, uh, right now I happen to just check it because I was, I'm, you know, I was going to say go look at it, but I checked this morning and for some reason the entire website was down. I don't know why. It was unlinkable. I suspect it was just for maintenance or something, so you could try it again later. Um, but the, the Detroit Institute of Art has a very fine collection of Chinese ceramics, and they have some really great uh, uh, Yuan Dynasty, early Yuan, early Ming celadons. And uh, th this big uh, uh, vase here uh, is one of them. This is a 72 centimeter tall vase, so it's about 28 inches tall. Beautiful quality. Uh, the the articles, the article, the story is very well written. Lots of good examples to look at. And she discusses the examples in some detail, which is very helpful. Stylistic evolutions of the period, uh, different types of pieces that were made during the period and so forth. Uh, so I, I highly recommend it. It's a good read. Um, uh, read it on your phone, whatever. And as you know with these, if you double click on the page, this will allow you to enlarge as much as you need to be able to read it. All right, somebody said, how do you enlarge it? On the lower left, there's a magnifier, but when you click it, it activates. If you double click on the screen, this will activate it uh, right there. And that bar will pop up and uh, uh, give you, uh, you can flip pages with it, you can do all kinds of things with it. At any rate, uh, check it out. Uh, the other thing we did, and this is kind of sad, I, I guess, is that uh, we have decided, we updated the, uh, the report card on the global pages, and um, uh, we made some changes to ratings, and sadly, one of the ratings that we changed, and I, 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 I'm, I'm, I didn't want to do it, uh, we downgraded Bonhams. Um, um, from an A, uh, we had sort of ranked them right along with Sotheby's and Christie's, and we have downgraded them uh, to a C. And um, there it is. Uh, and, and there's a reason we give in here. Downgraded due to a lack of clarity in dating and accurately describing, and their a lack of accuracy in describing items. And what I mean by that is we've had a ton of emails from people who have gone to the trouble of contacting Bonhams about the sale they've got coming up in Australia. And I'm just going to say it, the catalog, this, their, this auction is a disgrace for, for a major auction house, um, the way they've presented it. It's just a disgrace. Um, there, there are no dates. Um, they have vague descriptions, lack of photographs, and people that have gone to the trouble of getting the photographs basically are getting copies, are getting photographs of fakes, in my opinion. And um, um, uh, the, 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 this, the, the things like um, uh, this uh, Phoenix mallet vase, um, uh, it, it's estimated at two to 3,000 Australian. They don't provide any dating information on it. The stand is a Chinese stamp stand. 
Um, it's got Chinese markings on it, and um, it looks like a fake stand. It looks like a modern stand that was knocked out to go with it. And um, I, I, um, it's got some stickers on the bottom, but um, there's no provenance provided. Uh, th there's nothing. And um, I, uh, there's a number of lots in here like this. You have this, uh, 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 what would be ex an extremely rare thing, Wan Lee Market Period Dragon Box. Um, they're not. They're being non-committal on how old it is. They've given it a, a silly low estimate, and um, uh, but they're not saying how old it is. And I'm a little bit upset by this because they are not an auction house and get away with saying we don't know, so we're going to let the buyer decide or something like that. They they are a highly regarded auction house in in, in most situations, and if they can't date it, they shouldn't have it in their sale. And they certainly shouldn't be putting things in their sales that are not dated, all right? And they're not dating anything. They're not putting in descriptions. They're not putting in provenances. They're leaving it all very vague. And I saw some photographs of this up close. Somebody had called to get them and had them sent to them. Um, and this, from what I could see, it's a fake. It's a brand new bowl. It has no age to it at all that I could tell. The work, the brush work on it was mediocre at best. And it's got a Daoquan, um, and the San Duao bowls, as you know, are very, very desirable. And um, this one had abysmal decoration on it. They're not dating it, and they're giving it a, a, a you know, a thousand to two thousand dollar estimate. And to me, it's not worth two hundred bucks. But uh, at any rate, um, until they get their act together, they're going to be a C, which is. Uh, which is sad to say because they've always I've always liked the people at Bonhams I've always liked I know people I know some folks that work there and I, I just can't get over how how they're I know they're on an expansion thing and they they bought Skinner's they bought Rasmussen they bought a bunch of places and maybe they're, they're spread way too thin but um, um, uh, uh, the Boston uh, operation they bought when they bought Skinner's um, their their painting department, American furniture department are all quite good. Jewelry department's good. Uh, their Asian department is a, is sort of a laughing stock in the industry, and um, I don't know how Bonhams is going to make all these places um, uh, functional, or maybe they're just giving up. I don't know, but the, the, they've got to hire experts for all these offices or have somebody um, uh, uh, writing their descriptions and dating things accurately for their customers, and they can't they can't do in an auction and just provide one photograph of, of an item. Uh, for example, this was something that leaped out at me because I've had five inquiries about this plate, a Guangxu uh, character iron red plate. And my personal view is, is if that's the best they can do for a photo, I wouldn't bet on it. I wouldn't bet on it with a, with a 10 foot pole. Now it may be Guangxu, it may be market period, it may be. You can't tell from the picture though. You cannot tell from that photograph that for some reason they think the box means something. The box is nothing. Who cares about the box? Put a big picture of the plate in front and back, detailed shots. Um, anyway, um, so that that's my bid on uh, Bonhams. I'm, you know, sort of a drag. And I'm hoping Christie's and Sotheby's don't follow them down this hall uh, because this is going to hurt them. Um, uh, um, and they're going to have a lot of unhappy buyers um, um, uh, with sales like this. I don't know who Yvette Klein is, but... Uh, uh, she should maybe find another line of work. She's a specialist down there. Not very good at her job, I'm afraid. Uh, all right, now, what's going on? Oh, the um, uh, live auctioneers. Uh, this was the uh, Oak Ridge Auction Gallery. This this sale just happened yesterday. And uh, as I mentioned last week, Oak Ridge sells old stuff. The, they sell old stuff. They sell new stuff. They sell fakes. They sell, you know, that sometimes they're accurate in the description. Sometimes they're not. So it's, it's a real crapshoot. Um, we had put a, a few things on the global pages, things that we thought looked fine. Um, one of them was this, this um, uh, 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 goo-form vase uh, based on an archaic bronze, of course, but it, nicely done um, and uh, uh, with this relief uh, work on it, almost like pots or pot, um, uh, relief work on it. But I love the form and shape. I love the big, the big uh, trumpet mouth on the top, very attractive. Um, you go right through it and... Uh, is the bottom of it, and that's either an 18th or early 19th century foot, from what I can see. 
in my opinion. Um, nice looking piece, about eight inches tall, not terribly big, eight, eight and three quarter inches tall. And it was estimated at 1500 to 2500, which was a little strong, but not un unreasonable given the strength of the uh, monochrome market in, in the last few years. It's been, it's been fairly strong. It's like the silk, uh, the silk market, uh, the Chinese robes and so forth have been very strong and seem, you know, fairly unaffected by the turmoil in the world. But uh, I thought this was a nice thing, and, and I think it was a very good buy for $1,500 plus the premium. And the other thing that did well was this. This was that uh, Flambe Glaze bottle vase. Uh, uh, nice glaze, nice color, nice gently striated uh, uh, Flambe effect on it. Uh, the, the red was very deep, very rich, uh, like, a, like, a, like a dark burgundy almost. Uh, but nicely done, unglazed bottom. Um, pretty typical, and they had dated it as 18th century. I'm not certain it's 18th century, judging by the edges here, the way the glaze has been chipped back. I suspect it's 19th century, but it was beautifully done, and um, it was estimated, I think, fairly low, and given the popularity, again, of monochromes, um, it, it brought a very, very strong price. Uh, but there was a, there was a similarly uh, done one that turned up maybe at Freeman's or something, or, or Doyle's a year or so ago, and also did very well. I can't remember. It was one of those auction houses, or maybe it was Bronx. I don't know. But it, again, did very, very well. And here's another one. It was 13 and three quarter inches tall for about 14 inches. Pretty standard size. Nothing unusual there. Uh, but they just loved the glaze. They just loved the glaze, and the shape was appealing. The shape was very good. The shape was very nice. I liked the mouth on it. I liked the way the shoulder is uh, uh, gently curls out, and then you know that ex sort of exaggerated body, and then and then pulls back in. I liked that a lot. I thought it was pretty. And uh, then on to this. This was um, also Oak Ridge, right? Um, they had a couple of these pewter Yixing um, uh, 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 pots. Um, this was, uh, and, and both of them are pretty rare types, and I think somebody got a steal on them. And I don't know what condition the liners were in, but these are pewter pots with jade handles, and they made these, as everybody knows, during the 19th century. And um, uh, they, they cast the, the, they formed the body in pewter, and then they put yixing liners in them, and often the liners are signed by the potter. And uh, if, if fairly rare birds. Uh, if the liner's damaged, though, it severely impacts the value. So maybe they had damaged liners because um, they, they sold for a damaged liner price. Um, uh, a pot like this should bring four to $6,000 if the liner's intact. Um, the estimate was very low, five to 800. And there was another one, this one. I happen to like this one even better um, than, than the previous because I liked all the inscription on it. And I liked the form and I liked the very unusual lid it had. It almost looks like the lid's missing. It's not. It's a, it's a, it's a flush, mount, flush lid with a jade panel in it. There it is. I think that is nifty. And um, you know, but nice surface on it, nice script on both sides, uh, rather unusual. And uh, again, I have to assume the liners were cracked in them. Maybe they weren't. Maybe one of you bought them. If you did and the liners aren't cracked, you stole them. It was a great buy because this is, again, a three or five, three or $4,000 yixing pot to a collector. Um, a number of years ago, about eight years ago, we had a whole bunch of these from a collection that we sold. And, and they were bringing anywhere from four to $8,000 a piece. Um, and they were, they were very nice. But uh, th this is a... A good-looking piece of uh, uh, pewter, nice yixing liner in it, um, and if it was good, somebody got a heck of a great buy. Maybe they bought both of them. I don't know, but um, um, uh, absolutely um, very low price. And then this is um, also at Oak Ridge. They had the they have a bunch of silks and robes. This is a late Qing, early Republic period robe, but very nicely done with the uh, Phoenix round dolls, red-headed crane round dolls on them here. Um, uh, the rather abbreviated skirt at the bottom makes me think it's a bit more toward the later end of the time scale, more like a Republic period thing than a Qing period thing. But uh, it, people love this thing because the colors are nice. And it ended up selling for $6,500. Also, the, the, the uh, uh, 19th century ones, ones that are clearly 19th century, would this pattern typically bring between eleven dollars and $14,000 if they're in good shape. So, again, I think it's probably a Republic example. 
All right, but nothing wrong with it. It's a nice looking thing. And then this is coming up. This is coming up in a sale. This is a, a, a something we, I talked about all over on the global pages uh, there. And I'm going to just mention it here quickly. Just a couple of lots that are coming up that are on the global pages. And, and there's this. This is coming up at the uh, next Brunk sale um, in about a week and a half down in uh, uh, Asheville, North Carolina. And it's a really nice Kangxi Mark and Period. Um, egg yolk yellow uh, underglaze and undergla underglaze green bowl. And it was sold um, uh, by Ro Peter Rosenberg, the Vallon Gallery, down in uh, Wilton, Connecticut. Um, uh, P Peter passed away a few years ago, unfortunately, about probably six, seven years ago now. Uh, but he was a wonderful guy. I, I had known him for a long time. I'd known him for I knew him since the, since the late 70s. And he had taken over the gallery from his mother, who was also a dealer, a very good dealer. And uh, Peter and his wife Louise ran the place, and they were they were fun to deal with. Um, I once sold them a, uh, <laughs> a, a a Ming Dynasty Iron Guan Yin that was inscribed on the back. It was six feet, five feet tall, and uh, Peter was vacationing on Cape Cod with his with his wife and and, and his children and their children. The grandchildren were all there, and I had to, I drove down to Cape Cod to meet him uh, with with it in the back of the truck. He couldn't wait to get back to Connecticut in a week. He said, "Oh no, no, bring it down, bring it down." And um, uh, we did we did it on the edge on the on the shore at the beach where his house, where he was running a place down there, um, in the tail uh, out the back of a tailgate of a suburban. We had this thing and uh, we did the deal and um, he sold it uh, to a, a very fancy dealer over in London, who um, had it at the uh, New York Asia show the the show in New York uh, that next year. But at any rate, this was he handled good stuff. That's my point, and he was good to deal with. And he sold this in two thousand six. Uh, for about $4,500, I think was the price they quoted, which sounds about right. And that was before the real peak in the, in the porcelain market. But uh, I expect it. I expect this should bring five to $8,000. It's a, it's a nice bowl, um, uh, nice condition. And I like, I like the little bit of blotchiness in the glaze. It, it, it's, a, it's a good sign of age and so forth. And it is, uh, what is it, five inches uh, Five inches in diameter, something like that. It's good, it's a nice little bowl, very attractive. And um, let's see what else is going on here. Uh, we got this. This just sold. This was down at Eldred's on Cape Cod. Uh, just sold uh, today. Closed 150 lots ago. Went for $5,500. Uh, the China Trade paintings um, were, were, were heavily estimated, but like I said a few weeks ago, Eldridge can sometimes puts high estimates on things, but they don't take high reserves uh, because they want to sell the stuff. But but uh, I think they they do the best they can. And this was a, a nice um, a Wampoa Anchorage uh, painting uh, dated to the uh, heading up towards the mid 19th century. Uh, but an interesting scene, an interesting scene with the square riggers and the frigates and so forth in the foreground. And then you have the, um, the, the Wampoa here, and uh, just a, a very nice uh, perspective. And there were all those China trade artists, of course, out there, uh, Chinese uh, artists uh, with their easels and whatnot, painting these scenes and selling them to the, to the tr trading companies that were working in the Hongs and to the ship captains. And they would have portraits done of their ships and the whole thing. It's a, you know, it was a fascinating era for artists. And uh, often they're not, they're never signed. Most of, most of these are never signed, which is too bad. Um, and there's this one, the Great Fire at Canton from 1822. Here's a portrait, a picture of it. I talked about this a few weeks ago because it's a pretty rare scene. And uh, here it is. It's, it's a bit dark, but it's historic. It's a very historic scene. This was a massive fire, and it swept through like five or six of the warehouses, the Hongs. Um, everything was smoke damaged. It was a real mess. And there was a lot of news on it back at the time because it just was a disruption to, to shipping and uh, so forth. But at any rate, it, it sold for $4,500, which I think was a good buy. Um, but when you're done with the buyer's premium, you're up about to 6000 which was the high estimate, which is okay. Uh, but it was an interesting painting. It's just because it, 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 it's, it's got a historic scene in it that's dateable, which makes it really interesting. And it makes you wonder if the, the artist wasn't out there painting it during it or did he just go and watch it and then you know, painted from memory for it, but it would be romantic to think that he was sitting across the bay with his easel on a on, a, on an evening with a with a with this fire conflagration going on, because you know when they they had fires there, they were almost impossible to put out, as you know. So uh, there you go. And now, um, 
Let's see what else is here. Uh, th oh, this was the uh, orange uh, orange uh, Fitzhugh uh, platter with the American Eagle on it. Pretty rare pattern, very rare pattern actually, um, with the American Eagle and a mono and a monogram and a monogram in the middle. Um, uh, very nicely done. This looks like a pretty good plate, and ended up selling for twenty six hundred dollars. Here's the back of it, uh, and it was ended up in a lot at Sotheby's at one point. Probably did. Um, they, they used to sell a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, $2,600, which is perfectly reasonable buy for a good piece of historic Americana. Um, and this was that big painting. I, that's what I threw this in. This was the uh, large Canton, um, uh, Hongs of Canton painting, uh, 26 by 44 inches. It had been relined, and they put a pretty big estimate on it, but this is why. It's beautifully done. And in it, you see the side wheelers, the old, the the first steamboat steamships coming in that were you know mechanically powered rather than strictly sail powered, and so forth. And uh, you have all the junks with people on them, in the in the, all this activity on the water. It's just a really terrific scene. And um, I, it's interesting because I think the, the the hong in the middle I think was the American hong at that time, and uh, they don't have the flag up, which means they're probably not there. But at uh, any rate. Um, uh, ended up selling for one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, even even with the uh, with the relining. This is a relined painting. When you see the back, that looks this fresh and clean with that nice crisp canvas, new stretchers. Um, the, 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 these Hong paintings were um, plagued by uh, uh, oils that were very very thick, tended to crack. The canvases tended to get stretched and get floppy, and when the canvases get a little loose, they crack even more. And very often, um, uh, art dealers and galleries, when they get these, will just routinely reline them so they don't fall apart. Uh, because this, this really does help go a long way to stabilizing them for a very long time. They put new, new stretcher keys in the corners and everything. It fits nice and tight, and it actually preserves the painting. That's the idea. It's, 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 uh, it's an important thing to do, because otherwise these, these pictures don't make it. They, they can fall apart. All right, and then there was this one here, also another one of Wampoa, um, uh, sold for 6,500. Uh, uh, this is an early one, and uh, you notice the uh, the older architecture on the ships here, and the, uh, un the, the how undeveloped Wampoa was, and there's the tower and so forth. Uh, classic scene, but a, a early, nice early example, circa 1800. This was right around, you know, within a few years of the start of, for example, of America going to China. Uh, the first China trade ships, of course, was the Empress of China, which went over and um, out of New York in 1792. And um, it's one of the things we're actually working on right now. We're putting together information for a video about that, about the history of the early China trade, which is really fascinating, and how it impacted Philadelphia, Salem, Boston, um, um, uh, the, the the privateer system when they when they weren't going to China, they were out raiding British ships at one point, and all kinds of stuff going on. A lot of fun. Uh, at any rate, uh, it sold to sixty five hundred dollars plus the premium against a five to seven thousand dollar estimate. So by the time it was done, it went over the estimate. But rare painting, unusual, and uh, that's a nice thing. And uh, here's an here's the oh yeah, we already showed that one. That's the one that went for a hundred and. 115,000. So uh, there we go. All righty. And uh, uh, let's see. Uh, eBay. How did eBay do this week? Um, there were some good buys on there. Here, this was uh, something. This was Kangxi 021019, who a lot of you know he's, a, he's, a, he's a, 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 been a seller for a long time. He's over in Europe. Uh, he handles nice stuff, and he's in Sweden. And uh, there was this very attractive pair of 18th century platters, beautifully decorated, about 12 inches long each. Um, there's the back of them, very typical. That's exactly how they, they should look um, with this uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, deep tan uh, border, this, uh, uh, the texture of the glaze on the back um, and so forth. Uh, but very nicely done, really handsome and with shaped rims all the way around. And uh, ended up selling uh, the pair of them. This was the bargain of the month. A pair of them sold for $208. Very, very good. And they were in excellent condition. So there you go. 
Um, uh, and then there was this. This was ancient arts um, over in the Netherlands had this. Uh, he always puts peaches in his pictures. I get a kick out of that. Um, he had this. He called it Chinese export. It really, I don't know if it really was Chinese export, but it was Chinese silver. But I'm not sure. It, was, it doesn't look like it was something that was made specifically for the export market, and it apparently wasn't signed. And so it may have been a domestic wear piece um, of, of probably of late 19th, maybe early 20th century, somewhere in there. Uh, but beautifully done, beautiful quality silver. And I think it was a great buy, $745 for that, um, with uh, some characters on the front, lots of reticulated lid, beautiful incense burner with it, with it, with it stand, um, the whole package. This was a nice thing um, and in, in very, very good condition. Uh, all the way down, and, but he didn't mention a maker's mark, and I know that he would have done it uh, because uh, uh, he, he's a smart dealer. So there was no mark on this at all, so it could have been made by any number of uh, silversmiths in, um, in, in Hong Kong or, or Shanghai or, you know, who knows. But at any rate, it ended up selling, mod I, think, I think, for a pretty good buy, $745, I think was quite reasonable. And it was good size, as you can tell by the size of the peach. All right, and then on to this, this, this shaped um, uh, Celadon ground and Famille Rose uh, vase, uh, probably Republic period from what I can see. Uh, yeah, it's got a China stamp on it, which they didn't start using until uh, uh, about 1895. Chances are this was made between 1900 and 1920. Uh, it has got, it looks like it's got a Yongshen mark or something on the bottom of it. Uh, but, so the, of course, some of the characters in here, the way they're, that, that second character, the way it's executed, um, is much more typical of Republic work than, and, and late Qing and Republic work than, than obviously, than period work and um, um, the, the, the color of the paste and so forth. But a good quality vase. And uh, a lot of people liked it. Ended up selling for $1,815. And I, I love the little uh, sort of faux ivory wood carved and painted uh uh, base that somebody made for it. I, that was, probably wasn't made in China. It looks like it was probably made in the West. And uh, it had been used as a, as a table lamp because you still got the hole in the bottom here. And the bottom here has been plugged. That was a, a power cord hole. Okay. But the way this mark is drawn, the way the strokes are done is very, very Republic period, I think. And it's execution or very, very, very late Qing. All right. But it was pretty. It was nicely done. Nice enameling on it. Um, sort of in a recessed manner, and uh, the Celadon color was quite appealing. Must have been a beautiful table lamp. And uh, then on to this, this miniature bottle. Wait, this thing is tiny, uh, but it had a beautiful color to it. I really liked that, that, that tannish brown color, flat unglazed bottom, um, 18th century, but a rare type. You don't see these very often. These are, these are very collectible. Um, some people uh, thought they were used as snuff bottles. Other people think they were used as samples. Other people said they're just miniatures. Uh, there's, a little, there's a lot of people talk about these. Um, uh, I could see it being used as a snuff bottle, of course, but uh, I don't think it was made as that for that. At any rate, a lot of people liked it. <laughs> it had 89 bids and ended up selling for $1,990. It was about two and a quarter inches tall, as I recall, right? Um, two and a quarter inches tall, yeah. Uh, very small, very, very small, uh, but interesting. And uh, on to this, remember we, we talked last week about the two very, I thought they were wonderful, these ink paintings um, out of an album. Um, there was this one and that one. And they're very similar in style, um, obviously, and similar scripts, similar signatures, same artist, uh, but two different scenes. Uh, I like this rocky outcropping with a boat going under it. But I like the other one, too. Anyway, somebody bought them, uh, and I hope, hope this one person bought both of them. This one went for $810, and, and this one went for a bit less, I think 600, 660 There you go. And um, uh, so for you know, $1,400, $1,500 with no buyer's premium, that was a great buy. And uh, the shipping was reasonable. These were out in Lansing, um, what was it, out in Michigan. And uh, about, you know, probably, I'm sure you combine shipping, so 20 bucks to get them to you somewhere in the U.S. if that's where you are, probably. All right, but very nice painting. Um, the, the ink work is very reminiscent of some Sung work, uh, sort of uh, literati school, classical school um, style of painting. But quite appealing. They were probably done during the late 19th century, but very, or the, or the 19th century, but very attractive. All right. 
And uh, then on to this. There was a, this guy had a bunch of these plates. Um, they're all very similar. Obviously, you got them from the same place. Here's the bottom of it. All right. They're 19th century sort of Kangxi revival. Uh, unusual border decorations on it. And then you have the double dragons in the middle. Uh, but very nicely done. And they all did about the, roughly the same price in the $300, $350 range. I think one went for a little under $300. But uh, that was the price, and this was a, a seller in Belgium got these. But I thought these were pretty. These weren't huge. He dated them accurately, circa 1900. Um, and what were they? They were like eight inches across or something. Um, I forget where the, the dimensions are. There they are, 7.8 inches in diameter. They weren't terribly big, but they were interesting. And um, maybe a number of people thought they were Kang Shi, and he was mistaken. He knows he, he was right on the date on those. But um, um, I, they might have been a little older than circa 1900. They might have been, you know, from 1860 or something. But they were not that's splitting hairs, you know, at that point. And then there was this, this Sui Dynasty uh, green glazed uh, greenware cup with the uh, stamped uh, uh, sort of almost like Mishima decoration on the outside of it. And uh, this was nice. I talked about it because it was, it's got a very attractive bottom. And it was sold by um, Bob McPherson, um, uh, London. He's now in the Netherlands, but back then he was in London. And uh, he's a very good dealer. He has a very interesting website. He does good write-ups on his items. He describes everything fully. He, he does a good job. He's a good dealer. And um, this was something he had sold, apparently. And uh, here it is being re-offered. And uh, nice little, nice little cup. Brought nine hundred and fifty dollars. All right, and uh, I think that was a, a very, a very decent buy. And then on to this, the uh, silver teapot um, that was by was it Hong Ching did this one, uh, Hong Chong did this one. And uh, what was it was nice. I liked about this. I commented on last week was that the um, the form is based is very similar to, to uh, what you see in Yixing teapots. Um, from the 19th century, uh, where it's done like it's like almost like part of a tree, and you have this section here is like the bark, and then you have these uh, 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 branches and uh, um, plum blossoms coming out, and uh, you have a conforming um, you know branch form lid on it that hinges back. There's the hinge, beautifully made, very very fine, very 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 fine piece of silver, and I think somebody got a bargain. Um, thousand and five dollars for it. I think that was an absolutely uh, great buy. I thought that would bring sixteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars. That was a very interesting piece of silver because of its kissing color cousin in the Yixing area, which they clearly copied it from, and um, the workmanship on that was so fine. Um, uh, and if you look up Hung Chuang um, um, in the uh, yellow book, the silver book over in the reference section, you'll find him in there, and he was known for doing extremely fine work. Uh, and this was a great example. So good on whoever bought it. I hope one of you bought it. All right, and now what's coming up over here? Let's take a look. There's a few things. Um, we're not done looking yet. There's this little Chinese uh, export uh, covered uh, bowl, sugar bowl. Um, nice quality China trade where it was kind of where you saw in England back in the day, uh, back when they were importing these Northern Europe. And some of them turned up in the United States as well. You find the tea sets, that kind of thing. And then there's this. This is coming up. This is a really nice immemorial um, 18th century uh, cup and saucer, but an elaborate um, armorial decoration on it. Very elaborate. Really over the top. And um, uh, it's up to $150, got two days to go. Should double that at the end, but we'll see. All right, but it's, it's, there's still room in it. Uh, and then this, the uh, Kangxi period uh, rose water bottle. It's had a silver top added to it. Uh, the silver top is not original to it, of course, but, but the, the, the bottle form is. And these were made for the, for the Indian market, the, in the Middle Eastern market in particular. Uh, very attractive, nice looking. There's the bottom of it. Um, and uh, another side. The guy takes nice photographs, doesn't he? Good photos. And uh, there's the silver top. I'd leave the silver top on it. It may have been chipped at the top and they added the silver to it. And it may not have been damaged. Sometimes they would just put silver mounts on the top because they wanted to use it as a candlestick holder or something. And they would just put this on there. And the, and the, the full height of the, the porcelain is right underneath. So you have to find out. But you can't tell by looking at it. They, 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 the silversmith covered it up. You can't. You can't tell how far up that uh, 
you know what the top of this looks like if it's been if it's been slightly broken and then polished or something. But at any rate, it's a, a nice piece of kung shi. Uh, it's up to two hundred and two dollars. Closes Monday. Ought to bring six to eight hundred. All right. And uh, there's a nice little rank badge on here. A nice little. Uh, you, you call that Kesey? It doesn't look like Kesey work to me, is it? Uh, I guess it is. I guess that is Kesey. Okay. Typically these are needlework. But it's a nice, nice pattern, nice soft colors. Uh, it's been put inside this Greek key frame, uh, but I, I like it. It's a nice look, lucky sort of rank badge. It's got a ways to go yet. Probably get up to sixteen hundred dollars or so by the time it's done. It's at eleven fifty now. It's got four days to go. It'll be on the. This is all. This stuff will be in the global. I mean, on the on the weekly newsletter page over in Bitamount. And uh, as I, I, haven't, I don't say it very often, but when you're there, if you want to find out the minute we update that page, there's a form you can fill out. And you just you sign up for the email notice. It's free. And um, you'll get an email um, within, I don't know, within five minutes of us updating the page. Uh, it's pretty handy. Like People like that. They want to get on with it. <laughs> and uh, then there's this, this uh, late 18th, early 19th century Chinese export strap-handled coffee pot or chocolate pot. Uh, nice looking, um, nice decoration on it with the oak, 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 uh, you know, oak clusters here running around the top or, or grapevines. It's hard to tell what they were trying to do sometimes. These it grapevines. No, it's eh, berries and oak. those look like oak leaves to me. At any rate, it's a nice one. It looks like it's attached. It's got a berry, berry finial lid on it, uh, and it's got four days to go. It's only up to nine dollars and fifty cents. Uh, I suspect it'll 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 go somewhere beyond that. Should bring a, a 150 to 250 dollars by the time it's done, uh, but we'll see. And then this um, is a, a very nice little uh, Yongshan period, um, um, uh, you know, relief work uh, under tray and teapot. And uh, let's take a look here. Handle looks the handle aubergine handle looks okay. It looks original. Um, with matching under tray, very nicely done. There's the back of it. It's got a nick out of it right there on the underside. That's okay. You can get that fixed for about 50 bucks. Um, the foot rim looks good. And uh, the only thing you want to do on these things when you look at them is make sure that the, because uh, this, all those, all the decoration is in relief. It's all pieced onto the piece, like a decoupage almost, <laughs> uh, using porcelain. And you want to check it for damage because these little bits. Uh, very prone to chipping. Uh, you put the teapot down just slightly too hard or you miss and don't hit the bullseye here in the middle with the bottom of it, you're going to chip something. All right. Um, so so you go over it pretty carefully, but uh, it, in general, it looks quite good. And uh, what's what's it up to right now? Um, it is up to just $51, but it's got four days to go. And as we all know, it's, it's okay. Um, uh, restoration to lid. Okay, so there's some sort of repair to the lid, um, and minor chip to the saucer. Okay, we saw the chip, but apparently he's he's, he's straight up enough. He says there's some restoration to the lid. I suspect the restoration to the lid is pro principally um, these little vine uh, br branches here, and maybe on the edge somewhere. But um, these, I wouldn't be at, at the slightest bit surprised if they were damaged, because these those things break all the time. They break if you look at them. And um, if this pot was used with any regularity, uh, surely it would just grabbing it repeatedly, eventually it'd weaken it, would come off in your hand. But at any rate, it's a, it's a pretty rare type, uh, very desirable for collectors. Yongshen period, you know, 17, early, first half of the 1730s, somewhere in there. Uh, nicely done, nicely, nicely done, very good. And um, that's sort of it for the week. Um, uh, we're going to be adding, updating the newsletter page tomorrow. There's some uh, sales on there that are closed today on the, uh, um, uh, no, we're updating the newsletter page today, excuse me. The global pages we're updating tomorrow morning. We're going to leave some of the sales that are finishing up today, the Eldred sale and so forth. There's a, there are some sales that go live tomorrow, but I wanted everybody that subscribed to, you know, check the prices and so forth before we change it out so you can see how things did. Uh, but uh, it's, 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 so far the price has been okay, but there's so much going on in the world right now. And uh, as I've mentioned a number of times, you've got the, the obvious conflicts going on over the Taiwan issue, and you've got the uh, 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 problems with the uh, Chinese banking system that's looming larger and larger and larger. 
<clears throat> that's the thing. I, you know, in the end, that could be more do more damage than anything that's happening right now. The condition of Chinese banks, they're going to have to be bailed out by the government um, because um, so many of them are government owned and they're failing and they're losing deposits. They actually put tanks in front of one of the banks or a couple of the banks because there were people going in demanding their money back because of uh, uh, malfeasance with, uh, in the banking system. So it's a big, big growing problem. And they'll, they'll, I assume they're going to figure out a way around it and they'll probably throw money at the problem and then lock a bunch of people up. And then you have all the other stuff that's going on regarding things. And it's just it's a stressor on, on the art market. So um, right now, um, and with currency a little bit tight over there, not a bad time to be out buying. Not a bad time at all. So, so let them wor work out their problems, and you just keep collecting. <laughs> all right, uh, you you don't need to worry about anything else. All right, have a wonderful week. S thank you for watching. Um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the videos. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube here. Uh, we do these at least one one or two videos a week. And uh, the global pages, um, the video for this week is up over there. There's a video that we did for for that page also for those users also on some upcoming lots that look pretty good to us um, um, uh, that we, we strongly suggest you check out. Okay, thank you and uh, see you all next week. All right, bye-bye. Thank you.